So today we have a boring head project and we're going to be boring a series of holes into a bearing housing like this and we're going to be setting the boring head with a set of gauge block ears. Uh, gauge block ears are just an accessory you can bolt onto the end of a block stack. They work with mainly square ones but there's solutions for rectangular blocks or you can even just put the blocks in a small grind vise. But we'll be using this digital boring head to do the work. So the gauge blocks need to be sitting on a pretty smooth flat surface and then have some kind of fence or rib that allows them to slide in a linear fashion. The movable jaw on a vise works pretty well. And so what we're doing is we're using the tool to see how much the gauge block stack will oscillate. If it's not moving at all, the tool must be smaller than the block stack. If it is moving, the amount it is moving TIR wise is how much bigger the tool is than the block stack. So right now we're, we're right on nominal size and if we increase the head diameter two tenths we should see two tenths TIR. Now we'll go back to zero and see if it's uh, our process is repeating. And now we'll go up to a thou oversize and see what that does. So as you can see, it's pretty responsive and accurate to the conditions of what the head's doing. What this does not predict, though, is deflection. So in a VMC, I typically see about tenth deflection um, from what the, the tool is saying it should be cutting. And something like a decal or an old bridge port, it might be two or three tenths. And something like a true jig bore, it'd probably be under a micron. It, it really just depends on how stiff the machine doing the cutting is. So this is our first of three passes. So we left 15 thou rough stock, and now we're taking 5 thou to leave 10 thou finished, or to leave a 10 thou uh, layer of stock. And this is called the three pass method, and you basically take three identical passes, and by the time you get to your last cut, you have a very good idea what the, the deflection is doing to the tool, and you can know how to account for it. So it's a um, pretty reliable way to do precision work. Works on lathes, boring heads, even end milling. Um, just apply that concept and uh, you can usually do some pretty tight work and know exactly what's going to happen when you take your finish pass. So now we're going from 10 thou down to 5. There's a little 50 millionths column. It's hard to see on camera, but I'm always chasing that one around. Ideally, I should be using a torque wrench to lock this. Um, over torquing it can cause it to jump around 50 millionths or so. So this is our second pass now. Now our tolerance on this bore is minus two tenths plus nothing. So I zero my block stack and or I zero my bore gauge on the block stack and I'm showing that it's got five thou and one tenth stock and this works out quite well so if I just take the remainder five thousandths I'll be one tenth under size and that's exactly the middle of my tolerance band
this is a really powerful process too if you're doing repair work and you don't have enough stock to do a test cut um, or even modification work. I also really like it for high dollar work pieces. It's uh, one less sanity check before you make a final cut on a very expensive part. And I overshot there. If you overshoot, always back way off and then reapproach. Just don't back up the necessary amount. Um, you want to get the lead screw slop out, and you always want to be loading the tool onto the screw the same way every time. I've had one of these apart before, and the threads on them look almost like a turned surface. Extraordinarily fine but there's still slop. All right, so no movement, and this should be our final cut. So with the actual boring parameters, I feed down, feed up. You have a lot of options for getting tool out of a bore. Uh, you can wrap it up. That oftentimes leaves like a spiral bore. Um, some guys get real fancy, and they'll stop and orient the spindle and move away and then wrap it up. Um, but feed up works fine for me. I'm usually not too concerned about the cycle time. So It does have a different effect parameter wise though. You're double cutting. And of course last bore has a big bird's nest but still look good. And there we are, a tenth under size. It's a real low stress way to hit size. Give it a try.